everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about genetics. The topic for the day is linked genes. Before we get into it, I will say that the ideas we're talking about today are a little bit complex, so forgive me if I use more words than I normally would. By the end of the video, here are the things that you need to know or be able to do. There's two objectives for the day. The first one is to recognize the difference between linked genes and independently assorted genes. And the second thing is to understand basically how to construct a gene linkage map. So those are the two things we got. We need to lay a little bit of background first. So first thing is we need to do a little definition of terms or a little, um, I guess, differentiating between terms. The two terms are a sex-linked gene and a regular linked gene. So previous video we talked about sex-linked sex genes. That is one gene that travels around on a sex chromosome. So we had talked about gene for hemophilia. That is a sex-linked gene in that it is one gene, and it rides around on the X chromosome. Now, for the purpose of this discussion and going forward, we'll talk about the idea of linked genes. Linked genes are two or more genes on the same chromosome that tend to be inherited together. So you've got on our chromosome, there are hundreds of genes. The genes that tend to be inherited together, meaning that they don't get separated from one another, are known as linked genes. They're linked to one another. Now this idea and the background work behind it came out of some work done by Thomas Hunt Morgan. This guy was really into fruit flies and he did a lot of genetics work based on fruit flies. So here's essentially what he did and what he was looking for in his experiments. He was conducting a dye hybrid cross for two separate traits. He had a normal wild type fruit fly that had a big gray body and full length wings. And he had this mutant fly that had black body and short stumpy little vestigial wings. So what he wanted to do is he wanted to kind of try to work out whether there was a relationship between the body color and the wing shape. So he did some experiments and he found that whenever he bred two of these flies together, I'm just going to abbreviate that wild type, then he got all wild type flies. And he found that when he bred these guys, which we are going to call the mutants, when he bred two mutants together, then he got all mutant flies. However, when he bred the two of them together, he got something kind of interesting in that he did get wild type, he did get the mutant type, but he also got some novel combinations that didn't show up in either of the parents. So he had some that had the normal body, but they had the mutant wings, and he had some that had the mutant body, but normal wings. So this kind of gave him a little bit of pause because According to Mendel's Law of Independent Assortment, it should have been a 50-50 split where, you know, there was a 50-50 split between wild type and the mutant. So Mendel's Law of Independent Assortment saying that, you know, uh, chromosomes, or not chromosomes, genes don't affect where each other go, doesn't account for the fact that he got brand new combinations that did not exist in either of the parents. So he started thinking about this and doing some work around it. And here's essentially what he found, or kind of the conclusion he came to. When you are doing breeding experiments, if the phenotypes of the organisms you are breeding, if there's like a pretty good 50-50 split in the phenotypes, meaning that half look like mom, half look like dad, or for whatever trait you're following, half look like mom, half look like dad, then that's probably the result of independent assortment, meaning that the genes are on separate chromosomes. And you can kind of look at it like this. Let's say that we have got one gene right here on the big red chromosome and one gene right here on the little red chromosome. When these chromosomes separate during meiosis, there is a 50% chance that both of those genes will end up in the same egg together. And there is a 50% chance that they will get separated and one will end up in each egg. So if your phenotype, the trait you're watching, shows up 50-50, that's probably independent assortment and the genes are on different chromosomes. But if you get a split that is different or if you get brand new phenotypes that don't exist in the parents, it is totally possible that we have got recombination going on. So let's say you do a breeding experiment 
and for Hunt's experiments that he did, uh, about 17% had a brand new recombinant phenotype. So that gave him some pause and said, wait a minute, that's probably not from independent assortment. So <clears throat> when it comes to crossing over, the distance between the genes is going to give a clue as to how close together or how far apart those genes are on any particular chromosome. So remember, linked genes are genes that are on the same chromosome. If you have got, let's say, two genes that are right next to each other on the chromosome. So if we're talking about our fruit fly, let's say that this gene is for the shape of the wings and this gene is for the color of the body. It's going to be likely that these two genes are going to stick together through this crossing over process because these guys will cross over as you can see right here. And because they're right next to each other, they stay together in that little orange piece. But let's say that you have got two genes that are separated. So maybe we have got one that is down here and one that is up here. Because they're so far apart, when this whole crossover uh, situation happens, it is totally likely that one of them is going to end up right here. I guess that's a terrible example because I kept them on the same chromosome. Um, but recognize that if those two genes are far apart, it's going to be much easier for them to cross over. So two genes that are far apart are going to show a much higher frequency of recombining and forming new combinations than two genes that are close together. So if two genes are close together, they're going to tend to stay together. So this would mean that it would be more likely for our fruit flies to have the same uh, wing shape and body color. If they're far apart, then it's likely that those traits of wing shape and body color will get separated from one another. And what scientists can use this statistical frequency for is to create a linkage map. And essentially what that is, is it's a roadmap of the genes on the chromosome. So this guy Hunt was doing work trying to figure out like what genes are found where on a chromosome well before we had any of the genetic technology we have today. And he did it simply based on frequency of any genotype or phenotype showing up. So the way it kind of works is that he would do a breeding experiment and he would find that, let's say, 50% of the time, genes A and B crossed over. So 50% is almost like saying that those two things are on separate chromosomes. So if we were to put them on a single chromosome, A is a really long ways from B. And then he would find that, let's say we are talking about gene C. Gene A and C, let's say that they are together something like 17% of the time. And genes B and C are together like 33% of the time. So this told him that because these guys are found together much more frequently, C is probably closer on our chromosome to B than it is to A. And this is kind of what a gene map looks like. It gives like a relative frequency. This doesn't say this gene is exactly in this spot. It just says that statistically speaking, because these two genes are found together 33% of the time, then they are probably pretty close to each other. And because these two genes are, wait, A and C, sorry, because A and C are only together 17% of the time, then C is probably further away from A than it is from B. Hopefully your teacher will give you some more practice problems around this idea. In summing up, I just want you to recognize that linked genes are two genes that are found on the same chromosome. They tend to be inherited together. The closer that those genes are, the more likely they are to travel together. The further apart they are, the more likely they are to get separated from one another. And the frequency of recombination, whether they stay together or get separated, can be used to determine roughly where on a chromosome they are. So hopefully this little tutorial has been helpful to you. My name is Mr. Kite. This is the Lab 207 webcast. Thanks for hanging out, and hopefully we'll see you again.